SpaceX's Starship Super Heavy system is truly a beast. Its immense power is a rocket science utopia. And if you haven't heard yet, Elon Musk just shared this. Quite mind-blowing. The photo is a top-down view of Booster 9 from a considerable height, showing orange flames at the rocket's base and waffle iron-like grid fins, which are designed to help the vehicle steer its way back to Earth after launch, extending from its top. On Sunday, August 6th, SpaceX concluded a mostly successful static fire test of its Starship Super Heavy booster. This is positive news for SpaceX after the perceived setback of its Starship orbital test in April, which ended with the triggering of the flight termination system after the Starship slash booster stack was unable to achieve stage separation, suggesting that SpaceX may be able to get Starship development back on track, which may be pivotal to the future of the company. SpaceX's previous orbital test of Starship became notorious due to the effects it had on the launch pad. Unlike most other pads, the Starship pad didn't have a flame trench, flame deflector, or sound suppression system. The concrete of the pad was superheated and quickly destroyed in what SpaceX's CEO Elon Musk called a rock tornado, causing damage to the booster's Raptor 2 engines that may have resulted in the mission scrub as well as spreading particulate matter for miles. As long Star Chapter Director for the Sierra Club, Dave Cortez, told CNBC, Concrete shot out into the ocean and risked hitting the fuel storage tanks, which are these silos adjacent to the launch pad. In order to prevent further mishaps, SpaceX has created a radically rebuilt Stage Zero launch pad, which replaces the concrete under the booster with a steel plate and a water deluge system intended to reduce or eliminate noise, debris, and damage to the pad. Footage of the booster test showed the deluge and super heavy booster combined to create immense clouds of steam, with both the pad and the booster appearing to remain in reasonably good condition. SpaceX tested the engines for 2.7 seconds, down from the planned 5 second test duration. Four of the engines shut down prematurely. Nevertheless, the comments by SpaceX on the video said, uh, The pad looks good, the launch vehicle looks good, and with that, that moves us another step closer to our next flight test. Preparing for the next Starship flight. This time, I think we have around 50% probability of reaching orbital velocity. However, even getting to stage separation would be a win, said SpaceX's founder Elon Musk on the 4th of August. The super heavy test is much needed good news for SpaceX as launches by the company's Falcon 9 rocket have steadily increased in frequency and reliability, garnering it the reputation of being the safest rocket ever launched. While the Falcon 9 is the foundation on which the company's current success has been built upon, getting Starship into orbit is critical to the company's future in a variety of ways. The company needs Starship in order to fully realize its vision for the Starlink mega constellation. With the ever-expanding consumer demand for Starlink service and its increasing presence in the national security space following its adoption by Ukrainian forces, the load on the existing constellation is only getting heavier. But while Falcon 9 continues to deliver Starlink satellites into orbit, the company has said that its real vision for Starlink will only be fulfilled when it can start putting its next-generation version 2 satellites into orbit. The version 2 satellites will feature optical satellite-to-satellite -satellite communication decreasing space-to-ground bandwidth load as well as reliance on terrestrial fiber optic links, along with a variety of other upgrades. They're also far larger than the existing satellites, rendering Falcon 9s impractical as launchers. SpaceX is waiting on Starship before it can start putting these version 2s into orbit and service. While SpaceX has introduced many version 2 satellites with enhanced capabilities during the meantime, Starship is still integral to Starlink's future as a service. Starship is also intended to play a pivotal role in humanity's return to the moon in the near future. SpaceX's next-gen mega rocket is still slated to serve as the Human Landing System, or HLS, for Artemis astronauts as they return to the moon on the Artemis 3 mission. However, NASA will not proceed with the mission until they can be certain that Starship is up to the task. NASA has made it quite clear that Starship must fly at least one uncrewed demo mission that lands Starship on the lunar 
lunar surface and will only move forward when Starship has met all of NASA's requirements and high standards for crew safety. As we move into the fall of 2023, Starship's testing delays are raising questions as to whether SpaceX can meet that challenge on time. Jim Free, Associate Administrator for NASA's Exploration Systems Development Mission Directorate, said at the KSC event that NASA received an updated schedule for Starship development from SpaceX during a briefing a couple of weeks ago at the company's Starbase test facility in Texas. He did not disclose the contents of that schedule, but said that NASA would update its plans in the near future after we have some time to digest it. When asked about his views about Starship since the June meeting, my concern is the same because they haven't launched. The day-long meeting at Starbase offered what he described as tremendous insights into the work and their plans, while also giving NASA an opportunity to discuss how Starship fit into the overall Artemis architecture, such as interfaces between the vehicles and spacesuits that Axiom Space is developing for moonwalks. NASA has already said that it's weighing its options on Artemis 3, even if the mission slips to 2026. In turn, Musk has made it clear that he sees Starship as the backbone of not only his Martian ambitions, but of the development of LEO infrastructure. Musk has said that Starship's combination of size and reusability could put a million tons of cargo into space every year and dramatically reduce costs to a little over $20 for each pound of payload on board. If successful, the effect this would have on the space sector is difficult to overstate, and it might well be a pivotal moment in history. At the moment, however, the if factor remains in play. SpaceX faces several hurdles before it can try to test Starship again, as SpaceX will still need to settle environmental issues stemming from both the flight test and this latest attempt to resolve its issues. A report last month from the San Antonio Express News revealed that the FAA is still awaiting the report it needs to identify corrective actions SpaceX must take to get the OK to launch again from Boca Chica, with an agency spokesperson saying that the FAA will not allow a return to flight operations until it determines that any system process or procedure related to the mishap does not affect public safety or any other aspect of the operator's license, and that the investigation is ongoing. The company also faces potentially serious legal hurdles over environmental issues. SpaceX and the FAA are co-defendants in a federal lawsuit over the Starship launch program. Plaintiffs allege that there should be further environmental assessments of the launches which would delay Starship testing for years, and that, and that the testing may cause significant adverse effects to both endangered species and to indigenous people in the area. SpaceX and the FAA have filed to have the suit dismissed, with the FAA saying that the groups lack legal standing, and SpaceX saying that the company passed an environmental assessment and complied with FAA-required mitigations. The newly tested water deluge system intended to prevent a repeat of the rock tornado that helped cause the controversy may itself create complications on the environmental issue. CNBC learned that according to the Texas Commission on Environmental Quality, or TSEC, the company never applied for the environmental permits that would allow it to discharge industrial process wastewater into the area surrounding the launch pad. At the moment, however, a TSEC spokesperson shared that no determination has been made as to whether the activity violated environmental laws and that, and that the agency is currently evaluating the use of the pressurized water system as part of SpaceX launch operations to see if state environmental regulations apply or were violated. And that's all, folks. If you want to support our channel and get access to exclusive content, please consider becoming a patron by clicking the link in the description below. We appreciate your generosity and your passion for space exploration. As always, this is Kevin for Great SpaceX, and until next time, keep looking up.